Hi everyone, this is Josefa Hamid, a Senior Analyst with Daily Forex and welcome to today's webinar. Before we uh, kick off, we have the necessary risk disclaimer. So please have a quick read of this risk disclaimer, but essentially what it's saying is that uh, anything you hear and see today is for educational purposes only. So it's not designed to be any kind of financial advice, trade signals, uh, trade advice, and uh, so on. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is, as I mentioned, is Josef Hamid. I'm a senior analyst uh, with Daily Forex. I've been uh, writing articles and contributing to Daily Forex for about uh, 10 years, since about 2010. Uh, today, I'm a Forex trader and a futures trader. Uh, when I trade Forex, it's primarily the majors, uh, but I trade a few crosses. I monitor about 20, 23 uh, forex pairs in total, but it's really the eight or nine uh, majors that I look at, and I trade a few futures contracts as well. Uh, for example, I trade the S&P um, index futures, the ETF, uh, sometimes crude oil, uh, and, and a couple of other things. Uh, when I look at my trading today, I'm a, a pure technical analyst uh, when I make my trade decisions. So what that means is that I uh, use charts, uh, price charts, and occasionally volume uh, to make all my trading decisions. I look at the economic calendar uh, to see uh, what announcements are coming up, to see if anything is going to be, any particular Forex pair is going to be uh, in play. For example, if uh, the, uh, the Bank of England has an announcement, uh, interest rate, a big interest rate announcement this week, uh, I would look to see uh, you know, what GBP USD is doing. But when it comes to actually placing the trade, I'll be using the chart to decide my entries uh, and exit. In fact, everything I'm going to show you in today's webinar is really stuff I use today to make money uh, in the markets. Uh, I've been trading for about um, 20 years, and for about seven or eight of those years, I've been full time. Uh, today, I'm based in Toronto, Canada. So, if any of you are in Ontario, my province, or in Toronto, uh, feel free to look me up. Uh, it'd be wonderful to have a coffee while things are kind of semi open at the moment here in this city. So today's webinar is called Foundations of Profitable Trading. It's really to get you, uh, give you that foundation or get you started in terms of what are the core organizing principles that you should be thinking about when looking at a chart. You know, initially when we open up a chart, we often see a sea of confusion. So what I want to do in, this, in today's webinar is to give you some uh, major points to help examine uh, the, uh, help examining a new chart and decide where you want to take it in terms of whether there's a trade to place uh, and so on. So what's the first thing that we see? Oh, before I, should, I, before I uh, move on, I just want to point out that uh, yeah, this is a live webinar. One of the strengths of a live webinar is that you can ask questions. Uh, so please feel that you have a Q, it's a Zoom, it's, it's over Zoom, you'll see a and a function. Please feel free to type in questions uh, as we go along. I have a fabulous moderator that's uh, helping me uh, with the questions. So if you have questions, I'll definitely, I can verbally answer them or we can come back to them uh, later on, depending on uh, what the nature of the question is. So please do make use of that, um, that facility. Okay, so foundations of profitable trading. When you look at a chart, there are really three key types of conditions or market movements that we can pull from that charts. So the first would be trends, so when a point of price is moving in a trend-like fashion. The other would be reversals, and the third would be something called bilateral patterns. So in, in, this, in the presentation today, I'm going to be walking you through each of those different categories of, of price movement. So let's begin uh, with trend and really break down exactly what a trend is look, looks like, when a trend is healthy, when it's not healthy, uh, and, and so on. So the first thing to keep in mind is that when price moves from point A to point B, it usually won't move in a straight line. It will usually zigzag along and form a trend. Now, if it's, a, if it's an uptrend, so point B is higher than point A, an uptrend, the key definition of an uptrend is that you have a series of higher lows. Now, because when you have higher lows, you also end up having higher highs by definition, but it's really the higher lows that signify that the market is, is in an uptrend. Uh, some decades ago, when I was uh, 
when I was learning how to trade, when I was first starting out, I remember going on a weekend course and the instructor said, when you have an uptrend or when you're going up an escalator, you're looking at people's, uh, you're looking at people's bottoms, you're looking up at them. And that's the way I always, it's not the classiest way of thinking of an uptrend, but it's actually stuck in my mind for all these years. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with that, uh, that memory device. Uh, so it's a higher lows that, uh, that designate uh, an uptrend. So when you're looking at uh, a downtrend, it'll be pretty much the same, a similar thing, except just the other way around. Similar principle applies. The market will be going down. And instead of uh, looking at the lows, you're going to be looking at the highs. And what you want is lower highs. You want each consecutive high to be lower than the next one. And when you have that, that's when you have a downtrend. So a simple example of a trend. Uh, this is the dollar yen chart. It's a pretty recent chart. I think it's about a few weeks old. And it's the 15 minute chart. So you can see prices move from point A to point B from the left to right in a downtrend. You, this would be the first, when price starts breaking down, that'll be the first high that I mark. Uh, the second high, I would mark it as that. Some of you may look at this chart and say, well, there's a high right here. And that'd be valid as well. If you want to use this high as well, mark that as a major high, that would also be quite valid. Um, that will be the next high. Some of you may say, okay, well, there's a high right here. It got slightly breached, not by much, and it may and immediately retrace. So this will be my next high in the, in the downtrend. Uh, that'd be my next high. So you've got now four lower highs. You've got a fifth lower high. So you can see a nice downtrend forming. Now, when I, for me, when this downtrend is broken, uh, it'll be at this point here. So now the last low, has been substantially broken and the price has really just kind of stayed above there now. It's, it's, it's not just tipped, tipped it for pipped it by a little bit. It has really come up fast, made, made a key, a key level here and broken that last high and the price seems to be staying above it. So this is not going, this doesn't automatically mean the price will now go sideways and not go down or the price will immediately reverse and go up. That doesn't by itself tell you, uh, that's not the message when a when a last low is broken or the, or the or the downtrend is broken, but certainly for this section of this downtrend, if you're trying to trade it, uh, I would say this section of this downtrend now is broken. Now we have to see what price does. Does it form a new trend? In which direction? Uh, and and so on. So that's uh, an example, a pretty basic example of a trend. For many of you, you'll 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 understand this if you um, if you've traded before, if you looked at charts before. Now, one of the things you can do, of course, is uh, to use a trend line if you want to join up the lows. This isn't my favorite method of signifying uh, a trend. There's, uh, there are things you can uh, decipher from a trend line. So, for example, you know, depending on how steep it is, you can see how fast the trend is moving uh, and so on. I personally prefer just to mark the lows or mark the highs, depending on the direction of the trend. Um, as it goes up and down, but certainly a trend line is applicable and you can see the trend line gets broken slightly earlier than the low, the last low. So it gives you an earlier quote unquote signal uh, along the way. Um, there is a, a bunch of articles on daily Forex. I think my moderator can send you the link. You can put it in the, in the chat. Uh, there's a bunch of articles about uh, tr uh, trend lines uh, on the daily Forex site. Okay, now let's just go back to that schematic of a trend and let's now start to break it down into different sections. So this is the basic trend and there's really two parts to the trend. There is um, a, a part that moves in the direction of the trend and there's a part that kind of corrects the trend or moves uh, in the opposite direction of the trend. Now the part that moves in the direction of the trend is called the impulsive section of that trend. And then the part that corrects is simply called the corrective move of that trend. So if you look at uh, there's Impulse correction, impulse corrective or correction, impulse correction, and so on. And that's really typically how we see most trends move. Now, each one, each, both impulsive and corrective moves have their own, um, their own features, their own um, uh, characteristics. Okay, so the downtrend will be similar, uh, just in the opposite direction. So you've got impulsive uh, and then corrective, impulsive, corrective, and so on until it until it moves to wherever it uh, wherever price finally ends up. Okay, so let's look at uh, impulsive move first. So what are some of the characteristics of an, of an impulsive move? Uh, what really signifies an impulsive move? Okay, so the first thing is that candles in an impulsive move are mostly the same uh, color. 
uh, you'll see um, uh, if it's a if it's an impulsive move is up, most of those candles will be if you depending on how you've marked the chart. Uh, I use AvaTrade. Uh, my, my candles are typically green and red. I think that's one of the default settings. Uh, but however you mark the chart, you might use black and white, you might use blue or red, uh, and so on. But mostly they're the same uh, color in an impulsive move. Second feature of, a, of an impulsive move is the candles close near the direction of a move. So if it's an uptrend, you'll see that each candle will close near the high of the move, or most of them will actually do that. And the third um, feature of an impulsive move is that the candles, the largest candles are in, impulsive, are in the impulsive moves uh, themselves. So those are the three main features of an impulsive move. Most of the candles are the same color, candles typically close near the direction of the move, and the largest candles are in the impulsive move. So let's have a quick look at another chart example. So this is the Euro USD. This is the current chart. So I think this is uh, as of yesterday's close. And you can see from uh, this is a daily chart. So each candle is represents uh, one day. And you can see price moves from A to B. And to get from A to B, this is from uh, middle of May uh, to early August. Uh, from going from A to B, it initially makes an impulsive move. So if we look at that impulsive move, we can, if we think about those three conditions again for impulsive moves, firstly, most of the candles are, are the same color. So you can see out of this, there's about 12, 14 candles here. Only two or three are red. Most of them are green. So you can see this is the impulsive move. And then most of those candles, and many of those candles, are closing near the high of the move. So near the high, 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 etc. So they're mostly closing in that direction. Um, so really now you can see that uh, that's probably that's probably an impulsive move uh, that's going to uh, kick off a new uh, potentially a new trend. Now, looking at um, corrective moves, so really the, the opposite applies to corrective moves compared to impulsive moves. So really now with corrective moves, you start seeing a mix of candle colors rather than just all greens or reds. You're going to start seeing greens and reds combined. You're going to see candles having lower longer wicks. Uh, and the candles are generally shorter in length. Longer wicks means the candles are less decisive. Uh, the, the body of the candle is, is going to be shorter um, in, in, um, in length. So looking at the, going back to that same Euro USD chart we just looked at, um, you can see that, okay, so this is the, the first impulsive move, and there you can see a corrective move starting. Now we're seeing much more of a mix of candles, uh, candles are, you have a lot more shorter candles along the way, and you have candles with quite long wicks uh, as well. So that's a that's a corrective uh, move. That's a corrective phase of the trend, and then it's followed by another. And if, actually, before we talk about that, uh, keep it when you're looking at a corrective move, look at the steepness of the corrective move, and it'll really give you an indication of. Is that corrective move going to be a potential reversal or is it going to continue the previous impulsive move? The corrective moves, they can be against the trend, they can be flat or horizontal, or rarely, uh, less common, they can be with the trend itself. So it can just be like a, a short corrective move like that. Like it gradually, get, it's still with the trend, but it, it has a mix of candles and so on. Uh, in this case, um, we have um, an impulsive move uh, and then the corrective move uh, and you can see the corrective move is a very shallow uh, at a very shallow angle uh, and when you see that uh, you can you can often tell that okay this corrective move is going to lead to another impulsive move so if you look at the steepness of the first impulsive move uh, it's very steep compared to the, the corrective move these shouldn't be equal if this is going to be a healthy trend moving forward the corrective move should be quite shallow compared to the impulsive move. I'm being asked a question, uh, is this like Elliott waves? So you, with Elliott waves, you'll see uh, the words impulsive and corrective uh, used a lot uh, to mark out the different parts of an Elliott wave trend. And they'll also use things like ABC moves, one, two, three moves, second wave, third wave, etc. So 
This is pure price action. It's not pointing to Elliott wave. There's an overlap with Elliott wave uh, compared to um, compared to what we're seeing on the screen right now. But this is this is not an Elliott wave type of a lesson. It's purely uh, what I like to call price action. Okay, so you have impulse correction, and then you have another impulsive move. So again, just like this, the first impulsive move, uh, you can see that there is a um, um, majority of those candles are green. Uh, the largest candles are in the impulsive move. Like you've got some big long candles here, and majority of those candles are closing near the high of the of of their of their direction is an impulsive move up. And you can see just looking at the steepness as well of that impulsive move, it's it's similar steepness to the first impulsive move and is much steeper than the than the correction. So that's a, a nice little trend that developed uh, in the Euro USD on the daily chart. And you know when you're looking at these things develop, you can see that you might not catch the first impulsive move because they're often very clear after the fact. But now you're seeing a corrective move and you can see you should be able to mark these in the chart as you're going along. And there are potential entries around here. You know, you think, okay, there's a corrective move, um, and you can, um, and you'll be able to uh, 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 pin those, uh, find entries perhaps in the lower time frames to get on a potential, potentially next impulsive move. Okay, that's the Euro USD daily chart. Let's have a look at another example. Uh, this is the uh, pound dollar GBP USD, um, and it's a 15 minute chart. So nice intraday. Uh, chart. So this is actually a trade I took myself uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, price went from A to B. So here you've got a very flat range here. This is a, the overnight session. So kind of the tail end of the um, the Asian session. So what I like to call the dead spot. Uh, there's not, in many pairs, GBP, USD being one of them. Nothing is really going on. Uh, and then price kind of, it's pre-London open. Actually, this is quite early in the morning, but pre-London open, the price starts to uh, really start making a move. So you start seeing the activity here. It initially goes uh, goes higher. Price goes higher, stops and reverses. Now you're seeing like when, when I see three long consecutive candles, I'm I'm prepping myself for a, for a new move in that direction. And this carried on for a fair bit. Um, this is the first impulsive move, and then we saw a nice corrective move. So this is I I got in around this candle here into into a short trade. There was a long wick here, and I thought, okay, this is going to continue adding, adding as a resistance. It's a very shallow corrective move uh, compared to the impulsive move. So the impulsive move is very steep and a very shallow corrective move. If you look at this uh, this corrective move, there's about a dozen candles here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve candles exactly. Twelve candles. It only took two candles. Uh, it took a dozen candles rather to cover two candles. Of price move in the impulsive session that really gives you an idea of uh, of of steepness. Um, and now once uh, once this is uh, uh, once the price moves down, uh, once the correct move is down. So my my entry was around here because of this long wick here. I thought, okay, this is going to act as a resistance. It's really uh, this is a weak corrective move. Uh, nice mix of candles, and lo and behold, there's another impulsive move down. And again, a nice a uh, steep impulsive uh, move. I've got a nice risk to reward ratio on this particular trade. Uh, a couple of people are asking me if this is going to be uh, available, this uh, webinar is going to be available to view later on. Yes, it absolutely will be. Uh, so if you are interested in seeing this uh, in this, this webinar at some point, um, uh, again, you can. Uh, there will be a replay link uh, available. Okay. Um, and uh, there is also, a, if you go to uh, FX Academy, um, fxacademy.com. It's a sister site for daily forex. There's a, a bunch of video lessons in there as well. There's an advanced trend line uh, lesson in there as well. If you just want to elaborate on that, I don't personally use trend lines as much. I'm not going to spend as much time talking about trend lines. Uh, but certainly, if you if you if you if you're interested in trend lines, uh, there's a video lesson in there. Okay. So that was the anatomy of a trend: impulse correction, impulse correction, uh, lower. Uh, if it's an uptrend, you get higher lows. If it's a downtrend, you get uh, lower uh, you get lower highs. Okay. Now let's have a quick look at uh, let's start on a quick look. Let's have a proper look, I should say, at uh, reversals. Uh, so the idea with a reversal is when the price has been moving in a particular direction, 
and it reverses in price. So let's say the price has been moving up. The price has been moving up uh, from point A to point B, and it decides the price then decides it wants to reverse, it wants to go back down. So within that gap, you can see on the screen in the middle, there'll be, in this case, it's a bearish, you'll see a reversal pattern. In this case, it'll be a bearish reversal because uh, initially the, the price was bullish uh, and it went from bullish to bearish, hence a bearish reversal. So that red circle represents what has to happen uh, to price to turn it around. It's very rare the price will just trend up and then just trend down with nothing in between. It has happened, it can happen, but it's, uh, it's maybe a little bit more common in the lower time frames, kind of five minute stuff. Uh, but certainly on the anything above hourly, et cetera, you're going to start seeing uh, some kind of a reversal pattern. In this case, the bearish reversal. So you can imagine it's exactly the same uh, the other way around. The nice thing about technical analysis is that whether you're uh, looking at markets falling or rising, exactly the same principles apply. So prices have been moving down, moves, moves up, and in there you'll see a bullish reversal. Now, there are a lot of reversal patterns out there. There's, uh, depending on how you wanna categorize them, you could say there are dozens, uh, but I'm gonna focus on two or three core types that really helped me in my trading and that you'll see around on charts a fair bit. Uh, the first one is called a double top. So this is where the price moves up, makes a top, makes a second top, and then moves back down. It's pretty self-explanatory. There's a, an invisible line here. Uh, it's called the neckline. So the neckline is, is the horizontal line where that support is between, uh, or that low is between the two tops. Uh, and we're gonna talk about that being broken when, in trades. And then you have an extension of that is you have triple top, really the same kind of thing, except instead of two tops, you have three tops, one, two, and three, and you, you can have a neckline here. And the next is the head and shoulders. So the head and shoulders is a triple top pattern except you have a more pronounced middle top. So the middle top is called the head, and each, either side of it is you have a sh what's known as a, uh, as a shoulder. Uh, and again, there's a neckline is here where the, the lows or, or that support is. So that's the, so these are all bearish reversals. So the price has been moving up, stalls, moves back down into a bear market, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the other side of that is exactly the same, except just inverted double bottom, triple bottom, and head and shoulders. Now, when you look at the head and shoulders, uh, this, is, this is a reverse, some people call it a reverse head and shoulders or inverted head and shoulders. I personally just call it head and shoulders, whether it's a bullish or bearish head and shoulders, it doesn't really matter to me. It's just a, it's just a head and shoulders to me. I use the same, um, uh, the, the same, uh, terminology. I think we're going to extend, initially the webinar was booked for about 30 minutes, I think we're going to extend that amount of time, it's already 25 past. Uh, so just to keep in mind, there will be a link in, your, in an email that will follow to you if you want to listen to the rest of the webinar and you don't have time. Okay, so uh, four hour chart, uh, pound dollar again, uh, and uh, you can see prices move moves down initially, uh, and then it moves up, and in between, you have a reversal pattern. It's a little bit messy, but it's definitely there. Uh, you have a uh, you have at least two bottoms there, so it's at least a double bottom. Now, if you depending on how you look at a chart, you might say, well, it's, to me, it's a triple bottom. Honestly, both are valid. Don't get too hung up on the uh, whether it's a double or a triple bottom or whether it's uh, a head and shoulders. The key thing is what you should be seeing is the idea is the price has been trending down. You should be able to read that context of the market. The price has been trending down, and then it, it just stalls. It stalls around this area, 1.145 roughly, in terms of price, and then it starts moving up. But here, you should be, as the price is developing here, you should be able to mark out you know, at least one or two bottoms, or at least two bottoms, I'd say. Maybe you consider this like a third bottom. And then you, certainly in terms of trade management, if you, you shouldn't be thinking about getting going short around here. And... If you had been short of the market, uh, but you have a target down here somewhere, uh, you probably you might be thinking to yourself, you know what? Well, I'm seeing price stall in quite a big way. Maybe this is the time to take profits, uh, and so on. So it's a pretty simple, um, a, a nice, easy to read pattern. That would be your neckline. So if you're looking at when this pattern would be complete, when price breaches through here, 
uh, you know, you can either wait for it to, this kind of a candle where it, it uh, pierces the line or wait for it to close above, which would be slightly later on here. Um, that could be your signal to say, okay, that is a complete double, uh, triple bottom. I'd say for this type of a pattern around here, you're really now starting to see that's a triple bottom. You know, it's it's really made its, its mark. You don't necessarily have to wait as late as the, depending on how much flexibility you want to give yourself. You don't have to wait until the neckline uh, is broken. Okay. Uh, uh, Euro USD. This is a much longer term historical chart. Uh, this is the uh, uh, weekly chart. So each candle is one week. This is going back to 2007, 2008. I quite like this chart because it was a big, you know, around that time, it was a big fundamental uh, driver of the financial crisis, the credit crisis. You know, obviously the equity markets moved really hard at that time and big currency markets moved. But even in those big fundamental events, you'll still see footprints of how price moves up and trends and then reverses. So here, the you know, Euro USD, the, the Euro had been strengthening against the dollar uh, for some, uh, I was gonna say some months, but actually a couple of years. Uh, and then it uh, and then it swiftly moved down uh, when the credit crisis, the euro weakened uh, heavily uh, after the you know when the credit crisis um, kind of unfolded. And you can start to see these big impulsive moves, big long candles closing near the lows, uh, and and so on. And most of these candles are green, sorry, are red rather. Um, and in the middle, when the, to to kick off that reversal, you had a nice double top. And there was a neckline, clear neckline there, and it closed below that. You can see that obviously uh, th that previous trend had now ended. Now, by itself, this close below doesn't necessarily mean it's going to continue going down, or it's, it might just end up going sideways. Uh, but certainly, this section of this trend is is over. That's done. And when it closed below, and, and around the credit crisis as well, 2007, 2008. I mean, the financial uh, conditions were in the news a lot. You should, you could be, without even thinking about it too hard, you should be pre prepping for a potentially new big trend, especially with the length of this candle. There's a good chance there's a new impulsive move that's going to kick off. And as it did, it was, it was a very steep move. This is compared this angle of this trend compared to uh, this particular impulsive move uh, down. But the setup, the, the first kind of inkling you get over the signal you get from it is this double top pattern right here and the break of the neckline. Um, when it closes below. Um, this is a, a Euro USD weekly chart, uh, slightly earlier uh, than the chart that we saw before. So this is, uh, the price has been trending up before it reverses. Uh, and it's been trending down prior to that. And what do we see here? I wonder if anyone can recognize it, but it's a head and shoulders. It's a, uh, you can see the three, the, the two shoulders right there and the head in between. And this has got a sloping neckline, which is absolutely fine. Uh, remember, you're going to see a lot of diagrams like the ones I've shown you in uh, online and even in books, etc. cetera. Um, those textbook examples are fine. The markets can often be messier than that. And, and you'll, you'll see things like sloping necklines, et cetera. Um, uh, but then that's absolutely fine if you see that. So you've got sloping neckline closed nicely above it right there. You know, completes this pattern. So if you're if you're short any point there, um, you know that really you shouldn't continue being short, or or you don't want to get into potentially short position right now. And this kicked off a whole new, uh, a whole series of new trends. So you know, a small impulsive move, a long corrective move, impulsive move, impulsive moves like this. They're very often quicker. There's a lot more speed, a lot more verve with an impulsive move compared to the corrective moves. Okay. Uh, bilateral patterns. So bilateral patterns are where the breakout can happen in e either direction. Uh, it can uh, go, uh, it can be bullish or bearish. So if you saw a root head and shoulders, uh, that's a bearish reversal or, or inverted head and shoulders, that would be a bullish reversal. A double top means the price will go down after the double top. Whereas in the bilateral pattern, the price can break out in either direction. And the most common form of a bilateral price pattern is when the price compresses and forms what's known as a triangle. So you have triangles, different uh, shapes, you have symmetrical triangle, ascending triangle, you know, this line is ascending here, and then you've got a descending triangle. 
for the longest time, I used to think that if it's an ascending triangle, it must mean it's bullish. And if it's a descending triangle, it must mean it's bearish. That's not true. In ascending triangle, the price can still break down. And ascend, with a descending triangle, the price can still go up. Um, it depends on what's where the price is coming from. What are the market conditions? So I don't spend too much time thinking about whether it's a, a symmetrical or ascending or descending triangle when you see it on the chart. But if you see the price compressing, you'll be able to see that, okay, it's going gonna, it's gonna to break out of that, uh, that squeeze at some point. And what you want to look for is, hey, where has the price come from uh, before? Uh, so if we're looking at this, so this is the chart we just looked at earlier at the beginning of the session. Um, and you see uh, ascending, you see that uh, Euro USD daily chart, um, big, big push up, uh, corrective move, and uh, an impulsive move again. And you look at that corrective move, oh, sorry, oh, do apologize. You look, at the, you look at this trend up, this trend up was set off by a, a nice uh, symmetrical triangle. Price squeezed up and started an impulsive move. Uh, this is the euro. This is the dollar yen uh, weekly chart. You can, we just, let's just examine this uh, and, and see what we can pick out of the chart. So before the trend price starts trending up, descending triangle. So as I mentioned before, it, even if it's a descending triangle, uh, it can the price can still break up in exactly what it did. Nice new big impulsive move. There you got a correction, and that correction was a symmetrical triangle, and it broke out from that. A small narrow descending triangle. But it continued the, and it continued the previous trend. And then the trend stalls, makes a head and shoulders, uh, and then reverses down. And then what's interesting about this reversal, if you look at this move down, it's not very clean. It's a mix of candles. It looks much more like a correction as opposed to these nice impulsive moves here and here, and particularly here. It's a much choppier uh, move down. Uh, it doesn't have, it doesn't look like it's got a real sense of um, conviction or um, uh, sense of integrity, you know, when when there's institutional, uh, the institutions are facing in the same direction. You know, there's lots of green and red candles on this move down. And then when it does stall, it makes a symmetrical triangle and it reverses into an impulsive move in the, in the opposite direction. And that's not surprising given how choppy that move down was. Okay. This is a, uh, now the bilateral, the triangles that we saw previously were parts of a larger, a larger trend, but you can have a triangle just by itself as a big reversal pattern. So the price has been moving up nice and steadily, compresses, and then moves back, back down again. Okay, wedges. So wedges are, um, they like triangles, except they break out in one direction. So I've left them as a section by itself. This is a falling wedge, and this is a rising wedge. So when you see a falling wedge, uh, you can see that uh, the wedge is compressing, but the price will actually break up from a falling wedge. It's not, it's not a downward pattern, it's specifically an up pattern. And with a rising wedge, uh, it will, the price will break down from it. Um, so this is, I'm going to show you an example of a couple of wedges. And uh, this is uh, gold on the daily chart. Now, this is such an interesting chart for me. These two, two wedges, one is a quite subtle wedge. It's not, doesn't compress that hard. Uh, and this is a much more pronounced wedge here. Now, if you look at this first wedge, you've got this big base of a pattern. It's, got a, it's called a rounded bottoms. So if you remember double tops, triple tops, imagine that with just a lot more, lot more positions, or, you know, the head and shoulders, except a lot more, a lot more points. You've got this rounded top followed by a wedge. This pattern is actually a combined pattern. It's called a cup and handle. Maybe we'll cover it in a future webinar, uh, but it's a really strong pattern when you see it. And then it sets off this impressive trend in gold um, it's a nice long-term trend. It really stalls for the first time here, but again, it makes a falling wedge. And, and when it breaks out of this second wedge, this is where gold just moved. This is coronavirus, this big V was when COVID kind of kicked in and all the markets went haywire. Uh, but this went on to just attack the highs. It broke the all-time highs back from 2011, gold did recently, uh, about a few months ago. 
So that's an example of falling uh, of, of wedges. They're really, they're not as common as the other patterns. But when they do happen, they're very predictive. Okay, some final thoughts. Uh, if the chart isn't clear, stay away. You don't have to, uh, I mean, you know, I've found you examples of the, the stuff I'm talking about, but very often I'm looking through charts, I'm looking at a particular currency pair that I've traded before. And in that moment, I can't see anything that makes sense to me. Uh, that's absolutely fine. You know, the trends are sloppy or there's no, it's, just, it's a messy range. Just move on to a different time frame or a different chart. And um, uh, yeah, you don't have to see something in every chart. I'd say more than 50% of the time, close to 75 to 80% of the time. In a particular chart, you don't see anything. Uh, that's why I look at 5, 10, 15 charts, because I'm looking for those two or three clear uh, sense of direction. Um, if you look, um, uh, and uh, the team at Daily Forex, the moderators, just put a link in there, a little bit more about how to trade uh, trade wedges. Uh, I haven't, in this particular uh, webinar, we haven't talked about risk at all. Um, it just It's not on the topic, but I always want to talk a little bit about, just mind your risk have a stop loss, uh, make sure that your targets are greater than the size of your stop loss, uh, trade with capital you can afford to lose as basic ideas. Hopefully we can do a webinar specifically about, uh, about risk. If you have any questions, you can email me as well, josefa at dailyforex.com. If you're in Toronto, you're welcome to buy me a cup of coffee or I'll get you a cup of coffee. It's always nice meeting other fellow traders. It's a, uh, it's a lonely profession. Uh, that's why I like to do things like this. Uh, Thank you very much uh, for listening to me today. Uh, it was a pleasure delivering this uh, this topic to you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, go to the links that our team have sent out. It really kind of elaborates on that. Give any comments and feedback. Did you enjoy the session? Are there things that didn't make sense to you? Uh, and so on. Uh, have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on uh, where you're logged in from. Have a fantastic day, everyone. Thank you.